booming in these cars. Ha ha, I got my own base. I'm booming, I'm bunking. Been getting it since the 90s. Pull up in the hood, hopping out, kissing babies. No, I had the money. I'ma get me a Mercedes and I put that on the milk. Kinda like a miss. All right, Rosa, you know, me and you always talk history. Every time we talk, we just talk about basketball history. And I've always had this thing where we always talk about these teams from the 80s. Obviously, the Lakers, the Celtics, the Pistons. And then you get those teams like the Milwaukee Bucks that get mentioned. But you hardly ever hear anything about that particular 80, that 87, I want to say, somewhere around that time, that Mavericks team that took, you know, the Lakers to seven. Can you talk about just being a part of that, being an all-star, you and Mark Aguirre, you know, James Donaldson and different things like that? I can always talk to you about how proud I am to be part of an expansion team that we came into and had the opportunity to build and build and build and got in tune with the fans here in Dallas and putting it all together with uh, Coach Mata and all the rest of the crew to being able to build this thing called basketball right here with the Cowboys and different things happening. We were able to do that. But when you talk about 87, 88, when you talk about all the, all the rest of the teams, you're talking about teams now that grew with all-stars also on that stuff too tall. I made the all-star team four times. You know, Mark McGuire was a three-time all-star. James Donaldson made the all-star team. Roy Tarpey was sixth man of the year. We had Derek Harper making all kinds of different defensive basketball teams. And uh, it's just important to note that the, the proudness that I have inside is to being able to be around all those great, great players and really having a chance to be basketball institutional right here in Dallas. Sorry, Reunion Arena. I know you're gone. I miss you. I love oh, you. Man. But the important factor is that there's a group of fans here that still remember that and know and understand how we started basketball here and built the, built the pair and beam so that the rest of the building could be put on up in that kind of a way. And I'm very, very proud of that. I love it, man. So obviously you talked all-star. You did play into the 90s, but I'm going to ask you this, and this is on the spot. Yes, please. If you did a Mount Rushmore for the 80s basketball, four players. Ooh, I can't even remember all the players for the Mount Rushmore for 80s basketball in the NBA. Yeah, who would be your four? Ooh, the eighties. Oh my goodness. You have to have you have to have the teams that were in there too. So you gotta have in the eighties, you gotta have uh you gotta have Isaiah Thomas. You okay. gotta have Magic Johnson. Okay. You know what I mean? You gotta have um I can't even remember all the teams that, that won the championships during that time too. You have you have you got um, Moses Malone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, my goodness. You got the guy I, from Boston, too. Oh, my goodness. And, and, and of course, Bird, Bird, Bird. Did I say Bird enough? Because <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a tremendous. So that would be the Mount Rushmore that's I would have. Nice you know what I mean? Those guys, uh, those guys were tremendous, tremendous players also, too. I don't want to leave any of the other guys out also. But, you but, named uh, every MVP possible. But yeah. uh, that's, uh, those, were, those were tremendous players. I like it, man. Just talk about the competitive edge of just trying to face guys like Larry Bird on a nightly basis. You see Magic Johnson, a young Michael Jordan come in midway. You got, you know, Magic Johnson, you mentioned Isaiah. I mean, you got Moses. Dr. J was still around. You know, can you just talk about the stars then? Because I feel like, unfortunately, there was no social media. So a lot of people didn't see. There was no TV access to see these guys. Can you talk about just nightly having to see those type of guys? Because you're an all-star, but you seem to be amazed by just playing against those guys. Well, it's important to note that all those guys were fantastic players, just like the, all the rest of us. I, I mean, I made it four times. There were guys over there making six, seven times, those kinds of situations. And they were great, great players. But on a nightly basis, I wouldn't, I wouldn't differentiate it from any time you're looking at the game today because it's a lot of fun and a lot of great, great players. The only thing that's different are the rules and implementation of how you play the game with the hand checking and hitting and technical fouls, taking them down at the hoop, all mm -hmm. those kinds of things that were very, very different. But it's a wonderful piece to note and understand that the game has continued to grow. The beauty of the skills that people are watching today of a center playing point guard coming down the court, power forwards handling the ball, starting plays. So the game has grown. The game has moved forward. People shooting threes all over the, all over the place, sometimes shooting too many damn threes. But that's what the statistics say. If you yeah. shoot the three, hit the three, you get mm -hmm. an opportunity to uh, be on top of the game. So it's a whole lot of fun. And it's a wonderful thing for our fans of which I'm one also, and I'm just knowing that the important part about it is I played in one era, and I get a chance to watch the next era and to, and to move it forward. So we're all having fun. Cool. Last question, man. So I'm going to name a few players, and I want you to just describe each one of them real quick to me. And you can make this off of being a player that faced them and also just watching them play. So let's have some fun here. I'm going to think some guys in the 80s. Dominique Wilkins. Well, Dominique was hard to guard simply because he could shoot the basketball and he could go however high you needed to go at the, at the cup, at the rim, 
he could go higher and with power dunk it on your head. So the important part about him was that on, a, on an offensive end, offensive scale of running and moving and shooting, he was both. He was both. He could get you at the rim and he could shoot a jumper so there was no laying off. That's why he scored what, over 27,000 points or whatever <laughs> the deal is. Fantastic human highlight film. A few more. Larry Bird. Well, uh, Larry is Larry's the ultimate. You can't fool around and mess around with that kind of a thing, too, because Larry could pass the ball, shoot the ball, had the nasty, crazy attitude, great, great leadership in what he could do, and one of the, one of the top players in all of history. So you can't go, you can't name a top 10 without having Larry Bird in it, period. I love it. Magic Johnson. Uh, the greatest point guard we've seen in, in, in basketball all throughout. And I know Zeke Isaiah is there also because he's won so much in the playoffs and has beaten so many different teams. I love Isaiah. I played with him. I uh, had a chance to play with him on the Olympic basketball team mm -hmm. as we were together there in the backcourt uh, in that way. But Isaiah is fantastic. But, but Magic was something that was extremely special. Six foot nine and, and, and was a power in what he, what, whatever he could do in passing that basketball and leading his team to victories. And you know what, the last one, because, you know, God rest his soul, this guy won three MVPs during that time, Moses Malone. Mo Malone was, Mo, Mo Malone was uh, just completely unguardable, and the, the opportunity was to, to get him on the boards and to block him out and to take him off of what he could do, and no one could do that. So whatever our coach wrote on the board, it never worked because Mo Malone could grab the rebound shoot the jumper, take you down low. All the things that were there to being able to dominate inside of that paint was his. And that's exactly why the Sixers were able to win that uh, NBA championship. I think back in 83, uh, they won the NBA championship. You know what, Ro? You know what? I did have one last thing. So, you know, you're involved with the Dallas Mavericks. I think it's just great because I always, every time, every game, me and you somehow run into each other in the tunnel. We always that, but you're talking to the fans. I want to ask you about this. Just we can make it real quick. 2023-24 Mavericks, man. What are you seeing from this team that you think that this team can get back into the playoffs? And obviously, you got Luke and Kyrie, of course, those are the stars. But what are you seeing from a former player's just outlook on this team? Well, my outlook is just to being able to understand exactly what the uh, what, what the other players are going to do. When you say other, you're still a great player, and what are you going to be doing? Luka Doncic is a tremendous player. So is Kyrie Irving. You have two all-star first team, all pro types on your basketball team. But the idea is to being able to get instituted with Grant Williams, figuring out how, de how fast Derek Lively is going to come through on the defensive end to being able to get those type of things done. Jaden Hardy, how is he going to be doing off the bench? Dante Exum, all the players that are there to being able to move forward, consistency off the bench and in the help mode. If they can do that, you'll have a rising team that can keep learning and going throughout the season. The defensive end is going to be the utmost and most important for the Mavericks. We all know they can come down and score, mm -hmm. but how are we going to be defensively and being able to be consistently defensively on, on, on holding teams below their averages and being able to do that? So it's going to be so, so exciting. I mean, Seth Curry is here, Stu Hardaway is here. You've got some players that can play the game and that kind of stuff. Don't, don't, don't forget about the, don't forget about the uh, uh, Würzburg connection. And having the opportunity yeah. <laughs> to be Maxi Kleba and being able to put the ball in the hole and being able to be one of the best defensive centers around. You know what I mean? So I think what's important is that how the Mavs come together with that and being able to see who the consistent third and fourth scorers are going to be. We already know the two, mm -hmm. but who's going to be three and four, which you need tremendously uh, to being able to get that done and being able to have a power off the bench and uh, defense, defense, defense. Love it. Well, everybody, man, just I want everybody to do this for me, man. Whenever you see Ro, just thank him for what he has done for the city of DFW and just for basketball. Ro, you know you're my guy. I appreciate your time, man. You know I appreciate thank being you, there. Thank you, too. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, it. Thank very, you, very much. Thank you so much. Boom it.